Hi everybody, uh, this is a quick video about a project that I just completed. It's an Apollo control center that I made for my grandson. And the intent was that uh, he could have some f uh, fun flipping switches and doing things and seeing the lights change. And then also I wanted to make it an educational activity. So I actually focused on the Apollo program. So he might actually learn something about uh, man's first missions to the moon. There's two sections to the project. The left-hand side is simply a bunch of switches and LEDs that he can uh, play with and change uh, color patterns and so on. And then the other side is actually built off of four Arduino Pro Minis. And what they do is actually perform a set of functions. The command center actually allows him to listen to the mission information and actually, there's a set of commands that I recorded for him that he can actually uh, use with the left-hand side and then adjust the various uh, things like fuel pressure and thruster level and so on. And then these two sections are actually adjustable. We'll take a look at those in a minute. And then this is actually, the Capcom Center is actually a series of recordings from NASA archives about Apollo 7 through 17 missions. But before we actually get into looking at how it works, let's uh, take a minute and actually look at all of the insides of this project and how I actually built it. So this is the power setup for the Apollo Command console. Um, basically, these are four 9-volt power supplies. I had some uh, power supplies are that I used for Arduino projects, had a bunch of them. I paid like a dollar and a half for these, so I basically just gutted them and then rewired them to connect to a 110 volt power source. Um, and then I set those up on two switches. Originally had planned to have the, um, the command console run uh, each half separately. Not exactly sure why, but that's the way I did it. Could have just used one switch, obviously, but went the two-switch route. And um, those then power on and off uh, each uh, pair of these 9-volt uh, power adapters. Each 9-volt adapter runs through a 7805 voltage regulator to bring it down to approximately 5 volts. And then... Um, I have four different power leads. Uh, one goes to the mission control center. The other goes to the Capcom center. Uh, one goes to the two digital displays. And then the other one drives the LEDs. So probably overkill on the power. Um, but as I said, uh, these were very cheap and might as well have more power than not enough power. In terms of the hookup, if I can hopefully get this turned around here for you, I um, set it up with a um, standard uh, power plug-in and then two uh, switches here to turn on and off. So uh, that's it. Like I said, hopefully plenty of power uh, to drive everything. And uh, let's go take a look at uh, all the working components. So these are the working components of the Apollo Command Center. Uh, it's basically driven off of four Arduino Pro Minis. This one drives the mission control uh, section. It's a, it's attached to an SD card reader, which I recorded a bunch of wave voice commands and mission information. Um, these are um, 8 ohm 0.3 watt speakers. Uh, as far as uh, amplification, I think one of the things you'll find with Arduino is it's a little bit of a trick to get adequate amplification of sound. I used or looked at several different methods. I'll talk about those more later, but ended up using an NPN 
a transistor, a 2N4401 with a resistor, and that was the simplest approach, and it worked as well as any others. So, um, uh, as again I said, uh, potentiometer for volume control, which actually, uh, the way I set up the logic, pauses the playback when you go to mute. Uh, headphone jack, two push buttons, one to select the mission information, and then the other is to select the mission control commands. These two uh, drive the two digital displays. Uh, this one is attached um, to the encoder, and then the, the other one is attached to the slider potentiometer, and then the red, green, or uh, green, yellow, and red. LEDs probably could have gotten by with one uh, Pro Mini to, to drive these, but from a library perspective, I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And uh, I know there is a way for sure, but in the interest of time and the fact that these only cost a couple of bucks a piece, I decided just to go ahead and use two of them uh, to do that function. And then this one, uh, this Pro Mini drives the Capcom section, which is the NASA mission recordings for Apollo 7 through Apollo 17, and it basically just plays them in order, uh, again, using an SD card that I recorded the waves on, and we'll talk about the uh, library that I used to actually uh, do the audio stuff. Again, a potentiometer for volume control, a push button to select the next mission, and... Um, headphone uh, control. Um, so all in all, a um, lot of uh, power for not actually much going on, but uh, rather than try to figure out how to do everything off of one, just separated it out. This side is the LED section. These are the large LEDs at top. And um, uh, these are automotive uh, LED. Uh, switches, they actually have an accessory function, um, and I wanted to com convert them into single pole double throw, so what I had to do was there's a little LED in there that lights them up. I had to go in, take a razor knife under the edge of the switch, and cut that wire to make it actually operate as a single pole double throw, and that seems to work fine now. This is the LED grid section. Uh, with a bunch of single pole uh, double throw. I could have used single pole single throw switches, but I just had these. These are hooked up in parallel and then all come to a common ground. And then these are the resistors for each of the different color LEDs. And then this section down here uh, is another set of automotive toggle switches um, that I used as a single pole double throw. Again, don't need the double throw function, but Anyway, uh, connected up to the blinking LEDs, and then you can see the uh, power cords going up. Um, as you can see, I'm by no means a wiring expert or an electronics expert, um, but I think uh, what I did is pretty reliable in terms of connections and reliability, hopefully. And uh, it was a lot of soldering and a lot of checking and I watched a lot of episodes of uh, the uh, Star Trek original series while I was doing this, so it was good to catch up on that. But um, anyway, this is the uh, inner workings, and we'll go back and take a look at the front and actually see how it operates, and I'll talk about some more of the things that I did uh, to create the console. Okay, so let's take a, a look at the Apollo Control Center in action. If you remember, I set it up on two different switches. So when you power up uh, this side, you'll see that all the LEDs light up and that you'll actually see uh, that uh, you can actually start changing uh, colors. And then when I power up the other side, the first thing that actually happens is we start a recording of uh, one of the Apollo missions. But before we do that, let's look at this side. I've actually got it set into three sections, comm power and engines, and he simply can change the status of, uh, of each of these. And then we have a grid of LEDs that he can change, and I actually have some commands set up for that. So as you can see, you can 
uh, turn off each row of the LEDs or you can actually turn off each column and then as you start turning off rows and columns you can actually set different patterns um, based on how you turn those on and off and then uh, the lights pumps fuel and oxidizers simply just turn off uh, and on uh, blinking LEDs so let's go ahead and power up the other side and the first thing you'll hear is a countdown sequence from one of the Apollo missions T minus 10 9 8 we have a go for main engine start we have main engine start 4 3 2 1 0 lift If you remember, one of the things I did was you can adjust the volume level, and if you actually go all the way to mute, then it actually pauses the playback. So when you turn the volume back up, it'll actually pick it up where it was. If you remember, this button actually changes the um, mission. So I can, I can go. Apollo 9. Go from one mission one to another. So let's go ahead and pause that. Uh, the middle section is actually a couple of um, digital displays. This one is just has a slider potentiometer that uh, goes up and down in uh, 0.5 increments. And if you'll notice that the LEDs actually change color. So going from zero to green in the safety range to yellow to red and so on and then uh, this is actually in co an encoder that i use to step up and down in uh, point uh, you know uh, one tenth increments so you can actually go all the way down to zero and it will actually go all the way back up and to 10 and go down again and vice versa so again, the LEDs move from green to yellow to red as you go from safety to caution to red. And then this section up here is actually the command center where uh, I actually recorded 50 different commands uh, from mission control. So if you push this button... Jack, I need you to set your engine settings to thrusters. Copy. So it'll give him instructions on setting the various switches and so on. Jack, go ahead and set your thruster level to 7.50. Copy. So in that command, I ask him to set it to 7.5. Jack, could you give me a reading on the O2 level in the lunar module? Copy. So also, I wanted to make it interactive to have him make believe he was actually communicating with mission control. So uh, there were several recordings that I made that uh, actually uh, I wanted him to respond. And then this button is mission information where I actually recorded information about the various uh, missions from 7 to 17. Apollo so, 7 launched on October 11th, 1968 using a Saturn 1B rocket and completed a mission of 10 days, 20 hours, 9 minutes, and 3 seconds. Mission commander was Wally Shara with astronauts Don Isley and Walter Cunningham. A test flight of the Block 2 command and service module in Earth orbit, Apollo 7 was the first manned Apollo flight and the first manned flight of the Saturn 1B. It was the only manned Apollo mission not to launch from Launch Complex 39. It also included the first live TV broadcast from an American spacecraft. So there's one of those for each of the missions, 7 through 17. One thing I did do on the mission control was... Jack, I need you to set your fuel that, pressure um, to 6.40 and make sure it does not go into the red zone. Copy. So what I did there was to actually randomize uh, the commands and I set it up in an array so uh, they wouldn't repeat. Uh, each set of 50 would not repeat, so they would be unique. Uh, back to, uh, you know, the, the, the Capcom portion of it, um, there is a NASA archive of the various, uh, 
missions, and I actually provide a link to it uh, in the Arduino forum site. And what I did was basically pull those down, extracted uh, a bunch of WAV files of each one, and then re uh, uh, put them on an SD card, and then use the TMR PCM library to actually play those. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, you know, hopefully he will enjoy this for a few years to come. It was uh, definitely a good experience in learning how to do some things with Arduinos. Uh, the sound, the audio was quite a challenge because uh, getting everything hooked up and working and trying to get the amplification to work, which I describe a little bit in the Arduino forum about using uh, an NPN transistor versus the LM386 chip to do that um, was, you know, different challenges there. So uh, anyway... That's the Apollo uh, Control Center. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, please uh, leave some comments here or go to the Arduino forum, which I'll also put a link in the comments, and uh, leave your comments there. Thank you.